Now, I've got a few examples of some games made by our staff. Now, this is not something these guys have put a lot of time into, so some of these things are kind of rough. And of course, this is just a few guys, and these are smart guys, they know what they're doing and they know the tool, but still, they haven't had a chance to interact with millions of fans making these games. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what might be possible in the years to come. Whoop, I skipped a slide. All right, so here's an example of our data editor here in action. This is our Uberlisk. As you can see, our Uberlisk has a number of spine crawlers grafted to his back. This is all done with the data editor. This is all stuff you can do with our tool. There's no custom code required, no code knowledge required. You just have to learn how to use our tool. You can see here those spine crawlers, spine spore crawlers are shooting banelings as projectiles, firing other Zerg units at our Uberlisk. But the Uberlisk is too mighty. He has taken them out, and now he's going to use his ability to destroy the ground itself to deal with this lurker threat. <laughs> Truly, can anything stop the mighty Uberlisk? <laughs> Perhaps a million billion Zerg can finally bring him down. But even as the Uberlisk dies, he will give off a blast of psionic energy, destroying his opponents. That's Terrible all done damage. with the data editor. Justin Kinklich, one of our best data guys, put this together, including the map, in about a day and a half. Now, Justin is obviously an expert at using this tool, but we've seen time and time again that our fans just have an incredible passion for this game, and they do things that we could not possibly imagine once the game gets into their hands. So here's another map put together. It starts to look like a regular map, but suddenly we find ourselves, what's this? A third person action game. So we've got a ghost character here moving through the environment, and I'm using my mouse and keyboard to control this ghost. Well, actually, I'm just using my keyboard right now, but just yesterday, the engineers put in support for mouse look. It's not in this build here, but at some point, you'll actually be able to move where you want to look and aim your weapons using the mouse, just like you would with a third-person action game. As you can see, we've moved from a rural environment into the city, and we've been fighting against the Zerg. And if that wasn't enough, now we're gonna go inside a building and we're gonna talk to a character as part of our third-person action RPG. And having spoken to this character, we're gonna use some custom UI created in our scripting engine, and we're gonna move back into the city and engage the Zerg threat. And you can see there's all kinds of monsters in this environment. We can use roaches, we can use hydralis. Anything that we could use in the RTS game is easily used by our mod makers down here as well. You could make custom units and put them here as well. These are just sort of standard Zerg units that come with the game, but you can put anything you can think of in this environment as our ghost character moves this environment and just blasts the place up. And if that wasn't quite enough for you, We've also got the ability to take our ghost character underground. We are underground in a real-time strategy game. Unbelievable. So we move through the underground mine here. We can continue to engage the Zerg, fighting with our weapons, aiming our weapon carefully. We can engage our cloaking device using custom UI put in by the designer of this mission. And this was put together by somebody in their spare time. Obviously, a skilled professional, but nonetheless, just put together very quickly, made a whole game world with a city, talking to characters, objectives, a mini-map you could use, a little arrow showing you where to go, all kinds of options. The last thing I'd like to show you here today... <laughs> this is our lost Viking game. We've got a little Viking fighter ship there, trying desperately to find his way home as he battles through a swarm of Protoss enemies. And this is just a total action game put together by Mung Song. He's one of our designers who came from the mod community, is now working on StarCraft II. You see our poor lost Viking is surrounded by Protoss on all sides. He's trying to deal with the carrier and suddenly a mothership arrives. You notice there's some custom UI there at the top. At the top right, there is a green boss bar in play there that will tell us how quickly we're damaging this unit. The mothership has a bunch of special abilities. 
there really is, as far as we know, not a lot of limits to what these players will be able to do with this engine. This is just the tip of the iceberg, just a few examples from some of the more creative members of Blizzard Entertainment, but really, who can say what's going to happen when the power of this editor and the power of Battle.net 2.0 finally gets into your hands, the users?